What's up everyone, it's OJH and we're back at it again and if that first clip is as familiar to you as it is to me then hopefully this video will help you. Now I did post a couple of days ago the kind of part one to this which talked about some important minis, the strategy and uh, the first two kills which was using Tyrion from the Alliance and it was using Ren for Blackrock. I will link that video, I think it's going to be up in over in that corner there somewhere. So if you've not watched that already, there's two kills in that video and a bit of a strategy guide. But in this video, I'm going to do the final three kills. So we're going to look at Beast, Horde and the Undead. Now a couple of things to talk about before we get into this is the first one. You will notice as we go through this that some of the minis are maybe not in their optimal place for boosts. That's because I've tried to lower the level slightly to make it a little bit more realistic for quite a few of the people who will be going through this level 27 encounter because just smashing through it with 27s, 28s and 29s just isn't a fair reflection. And the second thing from a tactics perspective is obviously this is a defensive fight. So so there's not really a great amount of tactics to it because the AI will do whatever the AI wants to do for you depending on how you play your minis so it can change from person to person but what I will say is there are two important times in this encounter the first one is at 1 minute 47 I thought this was triggered by the HP of his era but it's not, is that at 1 minute 47 is when all of the spiderlings will spawn. So if you are going to be keeping hold of some of the important minis, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, then be working towards that 1 minute 47 because there isn't a marker on the health bar or anything like that that indicates it's going to happen. The second time is with 35 seconds to go. With 35 seconds to go, Isera dies. That's it. There are two times for you to worry about. 1 minute 47 remaining is when all of the spiderlings spawn. And at 35 seconds remaining is when the fight is over. And a big thanks to Vaxum in my guild for educating me on those timings. Cheers, mate. Here is the deck I used for the Beast family. I used Charger because Charger is extremely versatile. And because of the root effect that Charger's got, means that she can stall units getting towards your tower. Things like the Fire Elemental that are going to do massive damage. We've got Chimera in there again that does amazing damage. It does huge value against all of the um, squad minis that are in this and, and just generally does amazing damage against pretty much anything. So we've got the double uh, poison talent on that. We've got the well pegs in there that can be used as kind of a ground distraction. Also a flame burst talent on there. So that's going to get extra damage. And there's not too many air counters in this one. So air minis are going to do well for you. We've got the harpies in there because harpies just put out an incredible amount of DPS uh, to help you just burn through things like Onu uh, and again the fire elemental. Pyromancer in there with the Pyroblast talent to help you take out those uh, enemy Chimeras um, and again just does massive damage. We have got the Harvest Golem in there because it's got a huge pool of health. It's going to spawn those chickens as extra distraction against things like the Prowler um, and obviously it comes back to life once you've kind of killed it the first time. So really, really resilient. can stay on the map for ages and then finally we've got the Quillbot in there with the Poison talent. Quillbot is going to be in there mostly for distraction. Uh, we can play to uh, put poison on big groups of minis um, and we can also use it for bits of tanking uh, as a sort of last line of defense against sneaky prowlers and, and all that sort of stuff anyway that's the beast deck this is the beast run okie koki then so as i've said to you before this is not an easy fight at all. This is a genuinely difficult one there's been heroic encounters which haven't been that difficult but this isn't one of them this is this is difficult, um, unless you're just like overpowered. So we're going to be reacting to things. And the key to this is to not overspend on your defense because all of a sudden there's going to be a stealth prowler and um, a fire elemental and a couple of chimeras that spawn from one of the three points and you're going to be, um, you know, struggling. So I always want to keep my pyromancer for the two chimeras that spawn in the top right corner. Um, I always want to try and keep hold of my Harvest Golem, if I can, for when there's going to be a Prowler. Um, and then there's all sorts of squad minis that are coming out of that top left. Um, so we're going to play a Chimera that's going to clean up all of that. Uh, and we are going to have to play a Harvest Golem on the right-hand side, because going up against a Fire Elemental being so tanky, uh, just taking quite a while for our level 24 well pegs and 25 Harpies to burn through that. 
So we're kind of at this point just cycling a... Um, what's its name? Chalga. Um, and then we are back round to another Pyromancer for the double cam areas in the top right corner. Sneaky Prowler coming down there. Pyroblast Talent doing an amazing job. Uh, Chimera hopefully going to do some decent work on the five elements. So we are going to take a little bit of damage. And the other thing is to keep your kobold going out to wherever you can you're going to want to get as much gold in this one as possible because this can get pretty sticky pretty quickly one minute 47 on the clock all the spiderlings are going to spawn we're going to play the harvest golem in the middle and we're going to play the chimera right on top of our base so that when all of those spiderlings come together all them squad minis that poison will be spread around really really good and within six or seven seconds we've managed to uh, so within 15 or 16 seconds we've got rid of that whole push and we're not taking too much damage now we just need to hold on for a minute we need to get to the 35 second mark and then we are done not going to worry about the chimeras on the right they've already taken a fair bit of damage or the moonkin the bigger problem is going to be the fire uh, the fire elementals and the sneaky prowlers so even though we've got our well pegs up there level 24 they are struggling and our harvest gone came down a bit late so the prowler did get a charge We've got 25 seconds to hold on. Harpies are going to do a good job of burning through that fire elemental, even at level 25. And another Chimera coming down to take out that entire squad. A Quill Ball coming down for distraction kind of just about soaks the kind of second Chimera shot, but not much we can do. I'm frantically pressing to get my Kobold out, but we haven't got time for that. The Chimeras are getting too close. And in the end... It will always get a bit busy towards the end of this fight, but in the end, not too bad at all, I don't think. Gromash is taking the lead from the Horde family on this one then. So we've got Gromash with the mirror images who can do decent work and hits like a truck. So that's uh, that's the option that I've gone for. Uh, Cairn might work for you as well because Cairn's got that AoE, that big rumble frontal that it does. And um, I did have a few goes with Cairn. Um, I just couldn't quite get it uh, couldn't quite get it to work. So we've got the Batrider in there. Again, even more splash damage for all those squad minis. We've got the Dark Spear Troll in there. So the Dark Spear Troll at level 25, even with the region generation talent just about doesn't stay alive uh, to Chimera so if you have got a Dark Spear Troll that's 26 then I think it will stay alive but we make it work with one that's 25. Harvest Golem in there because as I've said does a great job tanking and slowing down things like the Prowler especially uh, when it bursts all those chickens onto the scene. Chimera MVP same as the Pyromancer with the Pyroblast talent between the two of them they just do absolute work and then finally we've put the Blizzard in on this one because at the end when it's all getting a little bit chaotic that one minute 47 all the spiderlings turn up and they're all making their way into your base it's all looking a bit chaotic is that a well-placed blizzard can ease some of that pain anyway let's have a look how it goes Gromash then coming in hot and again completely different this time we've got a fire elemental that comes up on the right hand side um, I had a few goes at this one the chimera wasn't really getting the work done by itself so we've we've essentially over committed um, to kill that fire elemental but hey needs must you'll have a few goes at this and you'll uh, you'll learn what works for you so I think we're gonna see the dark spear troll here um, let's have a look will it survive one shot no, it does not survive. So that's unfortunate at 25, even with the regeneration. Uh, the double cam from the top right, Paramount's going to do a good job of that. Sometimes the Paramount gets hit, and sometimes she doesn't. On this one, she did. On the Charga video, uh, on the Charga replay, she didn't get hit. I don't know what means that sometimes she shoots first and sometimes she shoots second, but it is what it is. We've already got the Bat Rider up in the top left, plus the Harvest Golem. So when all of those squad minis spawned in the top left, they have been dealt with without us committing any extra resources to that. And as soon as we can, we're going to get a Kobold down. And that Bat Rider, look at the value of the Bat Rider. There's a second wave of squad minis. That Bat Rider dealt with double Raptors and dealt with double Spiderlings. And I think there was an Onu in there. There was a uh, Fire Remnant at some point. It was all going on. But anyway, we are going to keep hold of our Pyromancer set again for the double cam areas on the right. That is the Pyromancer's job in this. Um, and she's doing a good job at it. I think that Bat Rider is still alive in the top left corner. Bat Rider doing amazing work, backed up by two cam areas as well. Uh, that's going to be plenty for uh, plenty to deal with all that in the top left corner. 1 minute 47, all the Spiderlings have spawned. Um, and now this is a case 
of um, of looking where is the most chaos. Chimera and Batrider top left, that is going well for us up there. We've got a Chimera now played on our base on the right, plus a Batrider. And if we need it, we're going to have a Blizzard. We don't need it. We don't need it. The Chimeras have done an incredible job for us. Um, I've just got to watch out for these uh, pesky little Raptors. And we need to watch out to make sure that the Sneaky Prowler doesn't get a charge in for us. Harvey's gone doing a decent job of stalling the uh, Chimeras on the right. Dark Spear Troll going to come in and clean up the Moonkin. And we've got 30 seconds to go before this one is done. We haven't taken too much damage, actually. Pretty uh, uh, going okay so far. Batrider, again, Batrider. I mean, like I say, I've sung the praises of the uh, Chimera, but Batrider, my goodness. Um, I know what I've said about playing the um, uh, Paramounts off to the right, but I don't think that the, the double Chimeras are going to cause us too much of a problem. There's not enough time for them to get all the way around here. We have soaked a Prowler charge, but with only two seconds to go, one second to go, that is probably one of my better runs. And the final replay that we've got then to round off Isera, get out of there, you were difficult, I spent far too much time on you, is going to be Thalnos, playing a Thalnos deck with only one spell. Um, I think that for me, I did a lot of trial and error with undead minis uh, in this one, and I just couldn't get any of them to work. Ghoul didn't really last long enough. Um, Necromancer being single target just wasn't doing it for me. I had loads of goes with the Banshee trying to steal Chimeras and steal Fire Elementals. Didn't work at all, so we've got no undeads in this, so we're going to have to play some stuff out of slot. And I think the least important leveled ones... That was a terrible sentence. I think the minis that you can get away with being a slightly lower level are going to be the well pegs and the cool ball because the cool ball's in there for distraction and the well pegs because they're a flying mini they do the flame burst as well is that they're gonna they're gonna get some decent value. So those are the two that I've opted to be not boosted in the spell slot. We've got the polymorph. Polymorph is going to help us massively dealing with the double chimeras because we've taken the pyromancer out. So our main attack for the double chimeras is going to be the witch doctor with the spirit world talent and then the uh, polymorph spell um, so we'll see how that works we still got chimera in there all faithful and we still got the harvest golem in there again all faithful just both i think play an amazing part in this one uh, let's have a look at it in action right then as i said for me undead took a long time i had some goes with sylvanas that was definitely not happening I had some goes with baron just couldn't really get that to work either so we ended up with a one spell thalnos deck which kind of goes against the mantra for thalnos but hey, so we're going to open up. Cobalt going straight out. We need as much gold as we can. Chimera coming out. Those two lots of squad minis get out of here. Now, my Thalnos um, is at 28, um, but does a pretty good job of taking out the single Chimeras anyway. So even if your Thalnos is maybe 27, you see my Thalnos has lasted there with, you know, just under half health. So 27 should get the job done here. Um, as you can see, Witch Doctor, you, Witch Doctor, you are on double Chimera duty. That's your only job until maybe later on where we start to panic a bit. But that's your only job for now. Witch Doctor, double Chimeras plus Polymorph. That is that. So we're going to play a Harvest Golem um, because I've seen that there's already a, a Stealthy Prowler on the way. Chimera going in the top left corner, gets rid of the squad minis and we'll take out that Onu. And then, hopefully, at some point we're going to get some Kobolds down, which we are. Well, Peg's coming down over on the right-hand side, an extra little bit of splash. I don't think I played them in the optimal place. Really should probably have concentrated less on taking out the squad minis and more on taking out the Moonkin, but we've got a Chimera over there, and Chimera is wrecking everything. Oh, another point to note is that the Raptors, when they kill something, they seem to heal back to uh, pretty much full health. So we're on the countdown now. We've got 13 seconds to go. We haven't got loads of um, gold, and we know that in six seconds, five seconds, that all of the chaos is going to spawn. So I'm like, we need to get a kobold down. We've got to get some mining done. So we have uh, absorbed a prowler shot there. But we've got a chimera in the top left doing good work. We've got a chimera in on the right doing good work. We played a thalnos to look after that bottom entrance and everything that's coming in there. Polymorph, the lot of that. Exploding sheep talent on the polymorph. All of that is gone. So that has taken the stress out of it within about 10 seconds or so. 
We are back round to our Harvest Golem. And because I've used the Polymorph at the bottom to get rid of that chaotic bit, I haven't been able to do the kind of uh, my usual uh, on the right with the Witch Doctor and the Polymorph. But hey, look, when all them spiderlings spawn, you're in a needs must situation here. You just got you just got to deal with it. Chimera is going to come down. I'm not worried if that Earth Elemental locks on for a little bit um, because we've only got to hang on for another. 15 seconds and hold on is really what we are doing chimera has come down has got poison going on to our base we're not targeting the chimera i'm just going to sheep it we've got five seconds to go don't throw it away now five seconds witch doctor coming down to hopefully add a little bit of distraction that's the end of that like i say that is all five of my Isera kills. This is not an easy fight. If you're struggling with this, then fear not. These are the replays that I've showed you where I actually got it done. This took me quite a long time, but hopefully it will help you. If you're not already, please get yourself subscribed because it does help support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.